girls, children of all ages, we are live for the thousands of nuggeteers in attendance. Okay, possibly one family member. And the millions of nuggeteers watching from around the world. Okay, maybe five from Wisconsin, two from Illinois, and one from Texas. Temporarily Offline Radio presents Ham Nuggets. The fastest hour in ham radio YouTube. 60 minutes is 60 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And now, here is your host, the man, the myth, the legend, if even in his own mind, KM9G, otherwise known as T-O! It's all right. Well, this all works, right? Exactly. You are on track for success tonight, my friend. Uh, I was ready. This I, is read. Be a I read up professional. on it. Yeah. Totally. All right, fellas. All right, fellas. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is <laughs> Ham Nuggets Live. This Jim wants to say something. Jim, go ahead. I was still trying to process Larry there for a second, and it took me <laughs> just a second to figure out what was on his forehead. I'm like, what in... What? I, what? 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 I, what? I, 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 I had no words. I don't... Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Welcome back, everybody. This is Steve Knight Mnemonic Nine Gnome here, and we are doing the Ham Nuggets live show. This is the show where we now ham along together. And Larry, my friend down below, has never done FT8 before. Not a single call. No. We'll have a moment of silence for, for Larry, and then we're going to okay. get him on to FT8. Uh, that's what tonight's show is going to be about. So if you've never done FT8 before and you have a radio with a built-in USB sound card or you already have a USB sound card configured, you can ham along with us at home and you'll be able to make contacts with us before the show is over. That'd be One fun. way or another, That'd we're going to make this happen. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So Larry, introduce yourself. I'm sure everybody already knows who you are, but that's how station identification goes. Take it away. <laughs> I'm Larry. My call sign's Kilo Seven Hotel November. I host a very tiny, minute corner of YouTube called Ham Radio Live. But lots of nice people come there, like Tio. It's nice. Yeah. Is it's there Santa. more? Oh, oh I was born on a day uh, ending in Y. <laughs> there was a doctor there. My mom was there. Do you remember that? And the doctor paddled my butt. I don't do anything wrong. First time I <laughs> did something wrong right away. Bang. So far, it's called original life. sin, Larry. Right out of right out of the gate. <laughs> I think so. You're just born with it. <laughs> I'm not worthy. And then my co-host here, my, my, I brought my heavy hitter because uh, Larry is running an undisclosed radio, and I believe that Jim is running the same undisclosed radio, and if I can't figure it out, and Larry can't figure it out. Oh, we got this. We got this. Then oh, I don't know where we're going because we're Jim's we're here. There. We're there. <laughs> we're there. We're yeah. there. We are. Guys, how y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. I, uh, if you can see over my shoulder over here, I have the, there it is, the Zygu X6100, and below it is the XPA125, the previously fried amplifier. It is now Ooh. back in service, and it Look is currently that. currently transmitting 75 watts. So What I want to know is that is that glow behind the blinds, is that like snow blindness or actual sunshine coming in your window? It's actually just lights. I have a set of LEDs around the outside of the window. It makes it oh. nice, yeah. I thought yeah. maybe there was sunshine in Wisconsin today. Never mind. <laughs> That's one of the parts that I replaced next to that splinter in my finger. Oh, my Ooh. goodness. Ooh. And I actually replaced it with a smaller part because um, Zygu told me the part number, and I ordered it, trusting them. <laughs> I number, I please. Known yeah, I should have known better. <laughs> oh, hey, so Larry, hey. Tell, Larry, tell us about your station. What, what kind of radio are you running? What kind of antenna are you running? What kind of computer are you running? Um, yeah, it's the first time anyone asked me on the computer. I'm using uh, an Asus Imagine book. I just bought it for digital modes. That's all I did. And then my wife got a hold of it. So, but nothing's really been downloaded onto it, which is cool. Um, 7610 DX Commander Classic Antenna. Excellent. That is yeah. the hero's setup right there. <laughs> I feel so well. Wow. I've done something right today. Finally. Because oh, Jim has a 7610 yeah. and a DX Commander. And uh, you said you're running um, an Asus Imagine book. What operating system does that run? Windows 10. Windows 10. Windows, okay. So okay. Another reason why I brought Jim, because 
TO don't windows, but that's okay. <laughs> Once you get Larry. past okay. downloading the software, you're good to go. Yeah. There, yeah. Right. there are some issues with windows. Every time windows wants to update itself, it will change your sound settings and it will change your com port settings. So what oh, I recommend cool. and Jim Not will show every you time. how to do this. So randomly it does that. Once you get this thing set up, so you don't have to come back and watch the video every the time. Wheel. Take some some screenshots of the uh, WSJTX configuration screen. Okay. And Thank then you, you, you will have that as reference. So I do that because I switch radios enough that I want to, you know, just get right to it, not have to sure. remember anything. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good to learn. You know, we had a lot of people at the beginning of the year, we talked about news resolutions on the channel and what they want to learn. And the majority said, digital modes so i thought well geez how can i you know not know a little more about it so i appreciate you all taking the time to help me tonight thank you yeah yeah sure so that's so all about bud at the bottom of your stream yard screen there is a share button click the share button and you can tell it to share only the wsjtx app and hopefully yep. when it pops up its mini dialogue boxes we will see those as well so go ahead and get that squared away and then we'll walk through the settings um uh... Bad. If it doesn't work, we'll figure may it out. May or may not. Well, he may have to share his to display. Not I don't think so. I, I have, yeah, I have to do a different way, T.O. Yeah. So you're going to want, I think, this screen and then this one. Is that right? We, so you can, well, you we, I was that? hoping you could bring the WSJTX up to full screen. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. I won't be able to get you full screen. No, I don't have a digital out for this. So it's it's coming out of the radio and it goes into oh. the sound bar, but I need the radio to do that. I don't have a it's dual a input computer. video no, no, card. No, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoa, no. whoa, whoa. Yes, you don't need anything special. I'm not running. No, 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 no. Larry, go his, to StreamYard I, at the bottom and do share. I think his laptop is a, com a different computer. Is that right, Larry? Yes. You're streaming on oh, one computer and your laptop is Oh, That's oh, correct. okay. That's right. I'm a Mac I'm, guy, guys. I'm sorry. I'm on the dark no side. I'm a Mac guy. No worries. No worries. Well, I'm I'm actually a Mac guy, too, or Windows or Unix. So, so That's okay. I'm like, no hey, Larry, Larry, yes, sir. Chipper Jones, Chipper Jones, buddy, right or left-handed, <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> It's we can great. handle this either way. Baseball okay. reference is great. Okay. So, yeah, so I've, I got, would... I've got everything to look up here. And if you want to see the screen, there it'd be. Yeah. And then, of course, the radio side, you know, we can go either way. Whichever yeah. whichever is easier. I'd like it to be able to help people. So that Radio screen is sexy. I like that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to share out my screen. Okay. And I'm going to go to settings. And you can follow along with what I'm doing on my side. Okay. So we start off on the general tab. And it's going to be fairly obvious where to put your call sign in. And if you go back to the general tab, have you already done that? Yeah. Okay. So I'll give you a little bit of an overview on what these different settings are here. So call signs, obviously call sign grid is obviously your grid square. You know what your grid square is, right? Yep. So you can go, and for those that are following along that might be new to this, you can go onto your favorite search engine and you can type in like grid square locator or maidenhead grid square and it'll pop up a website where you can type in your address and it will give you back your grid square. This is a grid location system that WSJTX uses and satellite ham radio uses to make the exchange a little bit easier. So I'm an EN35. Larry, what did you find? I'm uh, 84JU, so CN84JU. Excellent. If we, there's a lot of significant difference between the Linux version and the Windows version, including port names. So Ape threw out in the chat, and he's exactly correct. If Larry will click the StreamYard link with his WSJTX computer, we can share that screen and have Larry's uh, laptop full screen. That's um, the easiest way to do this. Hold, hold on, guys. Hold on. You're talking about my head. So um, no, no, no. Go to go to go into go Chrome ahead. on your on your WSJTX computer and click that and. Copy that StreamYard link that you clicked to get here and paste that up on that computer in a browser. Okay. Let me see. I, you know what? I'm sorry to tell you this, but I don't have Chrome here. I've got Firefox. Will not work with anything but Chrome. Yeah. Yeah. This camera view looks all right, though. Let's let's see what we can okay. do here. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd love to make it work with like, you know, make it slick and everything. But if I'd known mm -hmm. that, I maybe would have done a switch a nah. different way. Yeah. We can see it just fine. All that's, right. So, yeah, that's actually not bad. Yeah. So I don't do the start new period decodes at the top. That just means that the new 
signals are going to come in at the top and everything's going to go down instead of they come in at the bottom and everything moves up out of the way. It's a okay. personal preference, like the scrolling on your trackpad or putting the toilet paper on the roll over or under. Okay. So I, I don't check that button. Blank line between decoding periods, I do check that one and it just puts a, a line out and tells you what band you're on. That's nice to have. Okay. Display distance in miles as opposed to some other ridiculous form of measurement. Hogsheads, I don't know. Um, <laughs> footsteps T tx messages to rx frequency window i don't know what that one does if you hover over it it'll tell you but i just i leave that one checked it says uh, show outgoing transmitted messages in the rx frequency window okay so it'll take your messages that you send yeah. and it will put them on the left hand side window this will make a little bit more sense when we start making contacts in a minute okay and then so, so should, don't check that one then or check it leave, leave it checked mine's checked okay it's a it's one of those personal preference type things all right um, show DXCC grid and worked before status. This is pretty neat. So WSJTX will keep a log of every contact that you make forever until you wipe out the logs. And as a result, it will tell you that you've already worked them in some crazy color code that you will come to figure out eventually. And it will also tell right. you their grid and it'll tell you what country they're from. So if you're looking for different countries, so for example, all United States calls for me show up in bright green uh, when they're calling CQ. And then I want to say like South America shows up as purple and Ireland shows up as uh, red or something along those lines. But they, they do different colors per DXCC, per DX entity. Okay. I'm going to try and get you a little bit brighter if I can. You're, a little more you're just fine. Screen. All right. Just Thanks, fine. guys. All right. And so then, this screen here then, and then we're, so we're at the top display. We've got that covered. What about the show principal prefix instead of country name? That doesn't seem like I'd want to check that, does it? Yeah, so that's going to show you their prefix instead of like U.S. So I guess it's going to show uh, like K or W for U.S. Okay. instead of USA. Gotcha. And then yeah. I, I really don't do a whole lot on the behavior thing. The one thing that's really important for you is that double click on call sets TX enable. So the bottom group, the third one. Okay. So uh, just uh, the call. Yeah. Where, sorry, I'm looking yeah. forward here. Other, other column. There you go. Third one, first column. Double click on call sets TX Got enable. It. So what will happen is you'll see somebody that you're really excited about that you want to contact like later yeah. on when Jim shows up on the left hand mm -hmm. side, you yep. double click on it and it will immediately start contacting that person. Very good. Um, if you don't do that, you double click on it. It sets all of your macros. We'll show you macros when we get that far. Okay. Um, but it won't actually start doing anything. And you'll be like, why is nobody responding? Well, because you're not transmitting. Mm. And then... I have my TX watchdog set to six minutes. You can leave yours at 10. I'm actually going to up mine to 10 because I didn't see that option before. Um, it, what'll happen is you call CQ and then you walk away and you shouldn't leave your ham radio station unattended as a uh, good operator knows. Right. right. So, uh, so what'll happen just... is if you do that, it'll actually turn itself off after 10 minutes. Okay. So do you keep yours at 10 or you, you change it? What should we do? I just left. I just up mine to 10 from six. Did you? Six, so Good. yeah, okay. gotcha. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff here. I don't, I don't use any of the rest of the stuff here, but we do need to go to the radio tab at the top. Okay. And this is where we pick your radio. You've got ICOM seventy six ten. Your serial port and your serial port settings. Um, your baud rate setting is something that needs to match what you have set in your radio. Do you know what it's okay. set to? Yeah, I'll have to take a look here real quick. Okay. I thought this would be nice to do it this way because. As I'm learning, hopefully someone out there is learning as well. And oh, that would sure. be the, you know, that would be the gift that hopefully, you know, goes through this. So now, Larry, okay. did you install the COM port drivers for your 7610? I on think this so. Computer? Yeah. Yeah. I believe I'd already got that in there. Um, it's picking okay. up FT8. So yeah, I think it's working pretty good. Um, all right. Okay. So bear with me here because I'm kind of going different directions. All right. So um, this would be on... Um, settings and then um is it function and then i'm gonna make sure we get this right because i have never never run digital before so bear with me guys okay so this should be all under my baud rate uh I'm trying to find it here guys hold on oh oh okay 86 that hit the windows key and type device manager and then hit enter that's where you need to be well, he's looking for he's looking for I'm the, looking for the, the on, on, the, on the radio correct 
Yeah. Oh, on the radio. Oh, Correct. I'm sorry. Yeah. My bad. So I was looking at her function and uh, didn't see it there. I might have missed it, though. Possible. So. Oh, let me see, see here. It's going to be Jim's, Jim's hit buttons. <laughs> Just start blankly changing everything. Excellent. Okay. Um, keyboard type, screen capture. Thanks a lot for helping me out today, guys. I appreciate it because yeah, this is no nice. Problem. And I think it helps other people. And that's the main point of doing the whole thing. So Jeff's asking me about what is single decode in the first page settings window. And Jeff, I don't actually know the answer to that question. It doesn't have a tool tip either. Okay, so Larry, it's gonna yep. be it's gonna be under connectors. Okay. Thank let you. Me, um, let me light up the other mic. Thank you. And are we going out of the USB dial? No, not that one. Connectors CIV is what Mike is saying. CIV, sorry, I guess I didn't catch that part. Sorry. All right. <laughs> and, and Don saying, these confusing Good. icon um, radio menus, give me a Yezu menu any day. Right. Okay, so once you're in CIV, then yeah. you have CIV baud rate. Right. And I've got it on auto right now, but it's at That's the, fine. The high leave, it on, leave it on auto. auto. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then there is, yeah. So scroll down to the second page. Okay. And there is CIV USB baud rate and set that to either auto or 115.2. 115.2. All right. Because if you that. ain't first, you're last. And if you, that's right. A little bit of Ricky Bobby there. I like it. All that's right. Spirit animal. <laughs> that's how I drive to work every day. Good. Good. You got to, got to get it going, man. That's good. That's good. All okay. Right, so, all right. So I've got everything set. So just to, well, we, to we recap got a couple that more part, things to do here. Yeah. No, no. Just say, I'm just trying to make this so people understand what I did so that, you know, if they have a radio, like a 7,300 or like this, they know what to do. So hit your menu button and then go into settings and then well, go. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be different for a 7,300. It's not the same. I don't believe to do this. It is. Similar. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, it the should same? Be exactly, it should be exactly the same. Yeah. And you go to connectors, hit CIV, and then you go the the bottom of that page. And uh, once you hit your CIV, you know, hit your connectors, click CIV, and then make sure your baud rate is as fast as you can make it. And, you know, to 115, two, is that right, Chuck? Sorry. Yeah. Did I said Chuck. Sorry. Yeah, make sure you, you, you it, did. Matches. It, it matches. It matches in your computer. Thank you. It's a compliment, Thank you. though. Thank you, Earl. Appreciate it. It is a compliment. Chuck's a cool guy. Okay, so we're back now on the screen. Go ahead. Excellent. So what we need to Chuck. figure out is the serial port. And this is where Jim's going to come in handy again so we can figure out what serial port your machine is connected to. What I would do personally is I would pick the first one in the list and I'd hit test cat. And then if that didn't work, I'd pick the second one in the list and I'd hit test cat until I ran out of ports to check. And then I'd start calling up Jim. Well, if you got this already go, done, but go ahead. Well, if you go to device manager, and again, for future reference, go to device manager in Windows. So hit the Windows button on your keyboard. Okay. And then start typing device. And there click that. Yep. Scooch that over to the right a little bit, would you, Larry? Mm -hmm. And then go down okay. to where it says... Ports, COM, and LPT, about three-fourths of the way down. Yep. You found it. So there are your two ports. And there will be two ports, and you've already done this, and I believe yeah. you're probably already set. Yes. The, these get set by that COM driver, and you want to mm -hmm. use, I, I believe it's going to be COM3, the lower-numbered port. Yeah. It uses the other one for something different. And I yeah. like this, though, because it shows people what to do. So that's good. So just leave it the way it is, right, guys? I'm, yep. I'm pretty sure that's correct. You can go ahead and close that. Good. Thank you. So this is how you figure out what the port is. Yeah. 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 Because I'm getting, I mean, I'm receiving everything. Go. You can see behind the window there, it's, it's receiving everything. But I oh, think that's, yeah, no, that's, that's people. sound control. We got to get, we got to get through that's, this screen here first. That's not okay. from your COM port, Letty. Mm -mm. No, so. Oh, like, that's why I'm here to learn, right? Okay. Now to the right of that box, you have yep. PTT method, Vox, DTR, CAT, RTS. You want to set that to CAT? Uh, just a second, sorry. Top okay, right. PP, top right. Yep. That's um, top left. Sorry, 
I'm top trying three. to go so fast and bear with me. Okay. It's a little slower for me. Okay. PTT method is on cat. Yep. Set it to cat. Yep. Okay. And then below that is a mode box. You want to set that to data packet for this radio. Okay. And this, that will work because this radio is smart enough to know to use the USB port on the back for a sound instead of using the microphone on the front for sound. All right. Split operation, none, rig, and fake it. This is really interesting. Um, you can leave it on none and it'll work just fine. Or you can set it to rig and it'll actually use the split function on your radio where listening happens on one frequency. And then when you PTT, when you push the talk button, it will move to a different frequency and transmit on that frequency. And it will use two different settings inside of your radio to do that. And then fake it, it will actually move. If you've, if you've ever kind of paid attention to your signal, your signal is about three kilohertz wide. Your FT8 signals are only 50 hertz steps inside of that three kilohertz, which is why there's so many people that can talk at the same time. So it, it will okay. move the center frequency up and down. So you'll see your dial change a little bit when you hit transmit, if you have it set to fake it, okay. instead of being uh, 7.074 on 40 meters, it might be 7.073.24 okay. or something like that. Um, so I don't know that there's a benefit to using one or the other. Um, I will either do uh, fake it or I'll do rig. Kind of doesn't okay. matter. All right. Um, if it doesn't matter, I'll hit fake it. Okay. And on the 7610, it actually will do split, uh, true split operation because it'll kick on the other transceiver. Yeah, the transmitter. So you'd have to have another yeah. antenna set up. Okay. No, you, you're transmitting on two transmitters on the same antenna. Okay. It's just running split. Yeah. yeah. So hit, hit rig control. Doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to put on rig. Fine. Just That's fine. Yeah. Go ahead and so, test your cat. Hit, okay. hit the test cat button okay. and then give it a half a second. There we go. It's green. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That means it works and it worked the first time. It will turn red or it will throw up a big error message if it doesn't work. So that's the cat setting, which now that's green and shows that it works. The button next to it, test PTT. Click that one. If it goes red, your transmitter should be on. Yep. Yahtzee. And now you hit the button again to turn it back off. Okay. Perfect. Now we're done with this page. We got one more page to go to, and that's audio. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, there's another page beyond this. Okay, so input and output. That looks weird to me, Jim. What do you think? All right. <clears throat> so click that little drop down there on your input, Larry. Okay. So uh, that's not showing. Do you not have this plugged in the USB? Um, it's no. It's, it's plugged in to. USB to the to the radio. It's not we showing did the, the cat work. Yeah, I know, but it's not showing the ports. And he's getting it's, decodes, which is really weird. Yeah, I know. I'm a little confused. Have you got was a, uh, it was a have you got a laptop guys at Best Buy? Sorry. Well, no, that. Okay, let's just leave it on default input device for now. Okay. So under normal circumstances, you would drop this box down and you would pick the sound card that's built into your radio, and it will be. Well, Fairly obvious because in mine it'll say like TI Burr Brown or C Media Labs or um, would that be this year the up? smart sound technology? Well, let's, until let's let's no, no, you're already working. So I'm let's not get out of that. let's get out of that okay. and let's go look at the other one. Okay. No, no, no. Just, I know what you're talking about. That's fine. Let me just clear it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. Mm, that should say blah blah USB codec because it should be USB picking that codec. up off the radio. That's where that comes from. It doesn't come from his sound card. Um, I don't have my Windows so, machine turned on. I need to turn it on to look at it. So when Larry, what he's talking about when you plug your USB port from your radio into your computer, uh -huh. you're actually plugging another sound card into the computer besides the one that it's got built into it. So your uh, Asus laptop has a built-in Realtek audio device, which is what you saw in that list, and it has a right. fancy microphone device plugged in. Okay. So. Okay, so do I need a second USB? Is what you're saying, or what, am I missing something? I don't know. Let's just let's just go on from that. I'm going to set up something here where I can look at my settings. I know what that setting's supposed to be, though, and that ain't it. Okay. But your decoding, which tells me it is working, at least on the decode. Okay. So all right, I'm confused. Well, hopefully, it works out okay. CTO, there should be a device added. There's a device added from the radio, mm -hmm. and I'm not seeing his USB devices from the radio. 
but it's working. Okay, so, so I'm confused. So this one last cool. place I want to go here, go to the reporting tab. Now, hold on a second. Could that be, could I have made a mistake when I download the drivers for, for the radio? You could, could have something uh, that, that got corrupted there. Maybe should I try it again? I don't think you loaded the, the, the USB drivers. That's got to run it. with it. Let's run okay. with it for now. Since yeah. We're already decoding yeah. and then yeah. fix it. If we have more problems later. Yeah. So go to the reporting tab at the top. We got one more thing I want to do because it just hit me what I did when I, I had a different radio when I bought this. And so I had to change it to 7610, but the drivers that's where I think that's the problem. Yep. Go you ahead. ain't got that's the, you ain't got the USB drivers. That's yep. I'm amazed it's working, but it's also probably going to transmit his computer audio is what it's going to do. Yeah. We'll cross that bridge in a, in a couple of minutes. Okay. Okay. Well, because there's, there's only like three things we have to do to fix it. And since it's decoding, I just want to keep running until we run into an error. We'll see what happens. We'll troubleshoot it when we get there. Okay. So reporting tab at the top. Okay. And there's a little bit of magic that we'll share with you. You see where it says enable PSK reporter spotting in the middle? Yes. Click that, turn that on. And then at the very top, logging, prompt me to log QSO is already checked. Mm -hmm. That's the way I like to leave that. So at this point, let's hit OK and keep on rolling. Okay. I think Don is right. I think this is what we're going to run into, but we'll get there when we get there. OK, so you are now at yes. your WSJTX well, screen. Yep. <laughs> One thing at a time, Don. We'll get him, we'll get him there. Yeah, it's okay, guys. Um, keep, keep in mind, I mean, this was this this laptop was something that I hoped to do someday, but my wife grabbed it because, you know, she wanted to use it. And when I bought the laptop, I had a different radio manufacturer radio in here. So that's what did when when yeah. you mentioned that, that was like, oh, that's exactly what it is because it's got the wrong drivers in. Yep. Yep. So right now we are decoding signals and you can see we'll give you a quick tour of what this screen looks like. Um, at the bottom, you've got your blue and yellow and red. That's your waterfall display. That's actually what is decoding. And you see how it's got uh, vertical stripes, essentially, yeah. and then horizontal rows. Those vertical stripes are individual people that are transmitting. The horizontal rows are time references. So every time period, you'll get a new horizontal row, and you'll see somebody transmitting in that little block. So those are your 50 kilohertz blocks, 50 hertz blocks of um, individuals that are transmitting okay. and now it's gone. <laughs> no, it's there. I'm just trying to make sure I can see both and get them both. That's easier to see for me. So thanks Gordon. I'm trying to move. Yeah. So let me put this down so I can split screen and see it better. And hopefully people that might want to learn can, can learn along with me. We'll see. Yeah. So if you go down to that box where the, the graph is, you can mm -hmm. see where there's some black areas that there is no yellow. Yellow means somebody is there. Black means nobody is there. Blue means okay. there's just kind of noise. Okay. So at the top where you see the numbers 400, 600, 800, that's the okay. hertz offset of your pass band, the part where mm -hmm. your radio transmits. Okay. So where it says 600, click on that 600 with your left mouse button. And you see the green puck move. Now click with your right mouse button. Okay. Same place? Same place. And it says set RX and TX offset. So what you're going to do is you've now found a clear place to transmit. So you're not talking over somebody. This is the same as going, is the frequency in use and giving out your call sign. You're, you're checking the waterfall display to see that no one's using it. So go ahead and click that set offset. And now you see the red and the green. These will, these will move. And you want to make sure that you always keep them in a clean area. The green one, I believe, is listen, and it will move to the person that you're talking to to better hear them. The red okay. one should stay in a clean area. And every okay. so often, somebody will move in on your territory because they're not as considerate and respectful as we are. So Exactly. That's your good operating principles. Now that yes. we've done that, you can close that window. We'll just ignore that for the rest of this discussion. The waterfall? Yeah. Okay. Got it. And then maximize the other window so we can see all of it. Is it going to be good? I got to hold it so you can see all of it. Well, set it up so that we can see it with the camera so you can use your hands again. That would be nice. Thank you. Okay. Oops, sorry. Let me try and not and get people sick. Too late. Okay. Well, okay. So we try. You know, we're not all, we're not all smart like you guys are. 
That's all right. Go. That's all right. So on the lower left hand side, you see that green power meter. Yep. And it says 60. You see how it's green. You want it to be green. If you go over to your radio and we can do this as an experiment, if you go over to your radio and you move the RF gain and turn it up, you will see that bar go way up and start to get red. And it's the same thing that happens with your ears. You're just over modulating your, you're getting, you're past the point of where you can actually hear and decode and you're starting to get just blasting, just noise. Okay. And if you, again, if you turn that down, that bar is going to go down. Okay. If you hover over it, it says somewhere around 30 to 50 is the, the sweet spot. I run okay. it right below red. So I'll turn my RF gain up until it's red and then I'll back it off a little bit until it stays green. And then I'll keep an eye on it. I want to keep it up around that that borderline between red and green. So if you do that on your radio, we can actually see it move in real time. So go ahead and do that. Okay. Now, is it going to work though? Because the drivers aren't here. Yeah, it'll work it, fine. Okay. It's already working, Jim. It is not going to work right because no, you've got to have 7610 mm. drivers. Yeah, I don't think it will because I I've already pegged my RF gain. So it's, he's running it's that. He's going to turn on that microphone and it's going to pick up his background audio. He's running his audio. But he needs the 7610 drivers for the in and out comm. So, so where's he getting the decode audio. from? When you guys want to talk yeah. for a second. I'll just decode. I'll just download the drivers and we'll just pick it up. Okay. Larry, I pasted sure. it in the, in the private chat. There's a link right there in the private chat. If you can see that mm -hmm. and go there. And those um, drivers are basically click, click, double click. Go. Yeah. Yeah. The, the problem is, is that's on my production computer and the laptop okay. is a separate computer. So just go to, you guys, go to you guys ICOM Japan that, and that'll get you to where you need to go. Okay. Just type it. We'll, we'll vamp for a while as Larry's working yeah, over there. That's what I'm trying to do. Yep. So the other thing is, um, once you do this with, with, with an ICOM and I'm going to speak specifically to ICOM since what I got in windows, a couple, three, Pro tips, you can, you got to have their drivers installed and it's going to come up and it's going to call them USB codec. And WSJTX will pick the appropriate USB codec for the microphone and the appropriate one for the um, speaker. But they're named like almost the same thing. So you can go into Windows and you can rename those interfaces and call one, which is what I did on mine. 7610 speaker, 7610 microphone, because that interface is always there now and other programs can use that. That way, if you ever need to, you know exactly what that is. If you're trying to pick out an interface for some other device, you know that the ones named 7610 are not the device you want unless you're using it with WSJTX. The other thing is on, um, on this, once you get the, the drivers installed, and this is what I was saying earlier, and T.O. mentioned it too. The um, Windows, some updates on Windows will randomly rename, or uh, not rename, but change the COM ports that WSJTX is using. Not all the time, just some of the time. On alternate days, ending in Y, where the barometric pressure is below 27. I don't know. Um, I've done a bunch of Windows updates on my Windows box and it'll work fine. And the next time I try to use um, WSJTX, which is usually on FT8 off night, then it decides it wants to be wrong. And I'm talking into it and it's going out on the radio over the WSJTX. And it can be really embarrassing if you're like watching YouTube, YouTube, do you think? And, and it's transmitting yeah. out into the world on 20 meters. Yeah, people have and you're, that. you're that guy if you're on FT8 off and you're that guy every time you click. They say, hey, Jim, is that you that I keep hearing going? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. Yeah, so on Linux, I have kind of the same scenario where I've got a whole list of sound cards. And this is the, the Zygu 6100. It shows up as a C-Media Electronics USB audio device. Right. But it's fairly obvious which one's the input and which one is the output because it says input and output. And if I switch over to another radio, it will say input for whatever that is. So for the ICOM, it'll say input USB codec, output USB codec. For the Yezu, it'll say input USB codec, output USB codec, because yeah. they use the same chip. For the signal link, which is really popular, it'll say um, input uh, TI Burr Brown, something Texas Instruments yeah. Burr Brown, because yeah. that's the name of the chip that's inside of the signal right. link. Right. 
So you'll get used to all of that stuff as you do this and more that, often. And that changes. Uh, somebody earlier, and I answered him, Rod, I think, asked, what shows up on a Macintosh? <laughs> <laughs> Dev slash TTY slash USB modem dot the last. Oh, yeah. It's hideous on the Mac, the actual port names. Okay, so question here, because this is this is new, and I haven't read that part of this here. It's been a long day, guys. So um, are we looking for the CP2 10? Yes. X? Okay. Yes. And it's a 64-bit machine, so that should yeah. be okay. All right, good. Thank you. All right, so let's see WSJTX on a Mac. This is well, disgusting. You can. You said run parallels. Well, I'm running. I'm running it on a Mac machine. I'm sharing out that screen right now. It will run native you're, Mac. And Larry. you're not okay. No. <laughs> if I'd known that, we would have run our own just off of the Mac. I, I'm. I'm just maybe not the guy for you guys. Maybe. I don't oh, know. you're doing well, awesome, Larry. I Larry, this, that's this fine. Like, yeah, I'm not. There's plenty of people with Windows that that haven't done this or have had problems with it. No, that's fine. This is. Hmm. This, this is, is the this jam. Is the way the, the jam for works. this show is to teach you guys how to do stuff, and mm. and half the time Steve and I are trying to figure out what we're doing too. So, mm. and sometimes we don't figure it out. It's totally okay. Sometimes it takes two and a half hours to find yeah. out we were pounding our head on a wall for two hours and forty nine minutes of the entire stream. So, yeah. So on this on this Macintosh, the last time I did uh, WSJTX work was using the QDX from QRP okay. Labs. And it shows up as a Kenwood TS480. So <laughs> I have to read the manual and find that out. And then big, brother. look at all these different ports that I get to choose from. Pick one. And Rod, that is the answer to your question. It will show up as something like that. And depending on what you have connected to the Mac, I can tell you it will not be the Bluetooth port. So don't pick that. The easiest thing to do here, and somebody mentioned this in the chat earlier, remove the radio from the computer launch wsjtx look at this drop down box make a note yep. close wsjtx whatever. plug the radio in open wsjtx up drop this box down again and you'll see something new it's going to be one of the new things because the radio wasn't plugged in the last time <laughs> and then under audio here this shows okay, us so just, QDX transceiver. i'll just disconnect the radio then so that's simple we can do that get rid of the usb you continue. Yeah, and Josh is correct. Mac port names generally follow Linux's. Depends on what flavor of Linux, but yeah, that's standard. Kind of hey, thing. Josh. He's been in here skulking on us for a while. I think we had Jason in here, too. Rod's asking for help with D-Star. No, no, we can't help you with D-Star. Oh, We're... Rod. Rod, you <laughs> we go can't away. help ourselves with D-Star. Go away with your sass, Rod. Chuck is correct. It's the blind leading Larry. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I already feel like I'm more on you guys. So there you go. Yeah. All right. Hopefully we're good. And uh, there we go. We're not going to worry about the out of date drivers for that. We should yeah. have at least the driver we need. So I'm assuming at this point, jeez, oh, I hate. Okay. All right. So, now, basically, we would uh, start up WJTX, is that right? Or WSJTX, I mean, and then plug yeah. it in or plug it in and then start WJ. It, it Just or plug WS. it in. Just run it. Plug, the, plug it plug in the and run it. In first. Yeah. Plug it right it, in first. Gotcha. Okay. Good. Good to know. <clears throat> and then it will... Now go to your um, audio tab, Larry. Uh, hold on. Yeah. I'm trying to find audio here. You guys, this is file. all. Go to the you file guys, menu. This, all, this is all normal for you guys. I'm not used to this. So, All right. So settings. Yeah. Okay. My bad. Audio. Settings and then audio. No problem. And then we're going to go back here. There you go. Right. Boom. Go yep. And then go to the other one Perfect. and change it. And see how they're named the same thing? They're not actually the same thing, but WSJTX has got the appropriate ones. And you can dive into Windows and rename those to something that makes actual sense. But for what we're doing, this is fine. 
perfect. Jason, this is going to be very similar to your 7100 setup. Now, my friend, you should be good to go. So back to where we were with the RF gain settings. If you twiddle your RF gain knob up or down, you should see that you should see that green on the left go up and down. He also needs to adjust his ALC as well. We'll, we'll get there next. Because he's got that fancy split screen view. We'll be able to see the radio screen. Well, the RF gain is is all the way up, but I think what the problem is is it's it's on the uh, it's on the wrong one. Yeah. Because you've got two split, transmitters. Split. Well, yeah. it's yeah, it's going split and um well, let's let's go change that to over. fake it for now, Larry. Okay. That will that will that will simplify our lives. Okay. Uh, settings, yeah. And then radio. And then set that to fake it or none. Take your pick. Yep. All right. I <clears throat> and we'll bump up the RF gain again. We'll try it again, see if it goes. And no, let's try it again. So how do you pick you... which receiver on the radio to modify the RF gain on? There's a knob for it. Two knobs? Yeah, well, there's a knob yes. where you can, yeah, you can push the button on each VFO too, and it'll call that, that, that VFO. But I'm not, uh, but I'm on like VFO one now. And uh, okay. if I hit, if I go RF gain, it's it's way in the red and it's not doing anything so uh, no set down. your set your gain to about 35 40 percent okay and see, just now leave. it dropped down see how it dropped down yeah okay so now there you that's, go perfect that's what i wanted to see i wanted to show you how that works so you know what to look for okay so which would be between 35 and 50 you said i wanted it i personally wanted as high as i can get it green without it going red Okay. And for you, that looks like it's all the way up. Yeah. Okay. Now the the other thing you can do, and To has To is apparently going to a different church than I am on this one. You can also do this by adjusting the sound card, which is how I've always done it. I just leave the gain hard set at like forty ish, fifty percent, and then I adjust the sound card for the input level, and that drives that green input gain bar. Ditto for the output side, and then tweak the power meter over there on the right to get that ALC tweaked out. So either way will work. I just would rather mess with the sound card and leave the gain on the radio alone. Okay, so now we've got to do ALC settings. You've got your show, – show us the front of your radio again, how you were doing that before. Okay, just a second. Okay, and then bring up your meters so we can see ALC. Okay. That's good looking display. <laughs> That's right. What? So we just need to get the ALC display. Jim, walk so, through that. Well, he needs to key on somebody. Set your power to about 25% on the radio, Larry. Okay, that's fine. 20, that'll work. That'll that's work. Fine. That's great. Yeah. Fabulous. Go pick somebody that's calling CQ and double click on them. There you go. And now you're transmitting. Okay, I'm trying and to. Now you're not transmitting. See, I have a different way for doing this. I just hit the tune button, and it just drops out a solid signal. Well, and and it will, but it doesn't put out. You could do it that way as well. I, I thought it didn't want the to tune button on WSJTX, not the tune button on the radio. Yeah. So, so right now you're transmitting. Your, what does your, your ALC, ALC look like? Yeah. Uh, the ALC is real low. I mean, it's like uh, <laughs> it's microscopic at this point. You're okay. Perfect. ALC. Yeah. Well, ALC is like right here. He's so it depends on what radio you're on, but uh, the ICOMs want near zero ALC and like the Zygus want lots of ALC. Okay. So it just depends on how they, it's like a, a Ford truck and a Dodge truck. The gas gauge goes from E to F or mm -hmm. from, from E to F <laughs> instead. Right. But it's still, you can still read it. So the, your radio is going to want very little ALC and that's basically yeah. turning good. down the amount of signal good. that goes out. So good we are to good to go at this point. Now we need to start calling CQ. So let's get back yeah. over to your WSJTX screen.
Okay. On the lower right-hand side, you see where it's got that AC2BI call sign. And then uh, K7HN, lower... your call sign? Yeah, right. you're right there. Uh -huh. Okay. The other right. You were there. Now you're on the left. Okay. Sorry. There's, there's, yeah. got to remember, you're used to this. I'm not sure yeah, yeah, where no you're problem. talking because there's like, you know, no one wants to feel dumb on a live YouTube show, guys. So, you know, here's all these right here, right? And yep. so yep. I don't know which one you want me to pick. I just wanted you in that area so I could talk okay. about it first. Okay. So you have six different messages that are there. These are called macros. And WSJTX does all of the um, signal reporting and Roger Roger and 73 and greetings mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff for you. But you have to initialize that somewhere. So if you go down to the okay. last one, TX6, where it says CQ K7HN CN84, that's okay. calling CQ with your call sign and your grid square. Click the, the circle, the radio button there. Okay. And then go up right above that group. There's a row of buttons. Hit the enable TX button and you'll start calling CQ. Oh my gosh. Look at how well it worked. Right away. Now what, is your, what is your output power on the radio look like, Larry? Uh, it's, uh, well, it shows 10, uh, 20, excuse me, 20%. So. Red, anytime you want to, we can do this. You just let me know, buddy. Thank you we very much. We will bring you Please on here. Red, Red, you don't do FT8? Do you FT8, bro? Do you FT8, bro? Do you even? <laughs> do you even FT8, yes. bro? That's right. So, Rod, I understand that Chuck has an FTDX3000, and he's been ft 8 on it, so we can make that happen also. This could be the, uh, the Monday Night FT8 instruction series. <laughs> All right, so you're calling CQ on 20 meters. Let me see if I can see you. Jim, can you see him? Not yet. I'm still resolving. There we go. Let's see. I don't see him yet. He has a small signal. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't well, going to say it, Larry. <laughs> I... His antenna is not too tall. I'm not, see I'm not seeing him yet, no. Uh-uh. And we're on 20, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, wait, I was on the wrong 20. There we go. The other 20. Well, actually, I'm using, I'm using SDR console, and it has 20 alternative, which I, I don't know what that is. It might be European or something. Not American 20. Merc. Well, at least, you know, I mean, I'm seeing it go on my end. That's, that's progress for yeah. me. So I'm, that's pretty cool. I'm grateful to see that. K7HN. Or some stuff. That's cool. Okay. Larry, is your radio in USB D or data mode? Yeah. USB D1. And you're seeing your transmitter go and you're seeing stuff go out because I'm not seeing any reports on you yeah. on the, yeah, on the airwaves. I am. Yep. Here, I'll flip it over here so you can see real quick. There you go. See the TX? Right above yes, the yeah. USB D1. Yep. Yep. So you're in the right data mode. What is D1? Is there a D2 or D3? Yeah, there is. Or he's He should be on the right one. Unless he's done this before, he would be on D1. Yeah. Yes, you can actually have three different data modes. It's RT. Oh, Larry, well, disable was, all filters. All, all, turn off all your filters, all noise reduction. All the fanciness needs to be off. Okay. And your filter needs to be wide. Okay. Yeah, you're set to filter two. Like my ex-wife's head. Thank you, Jim. So, so are we talking 500, <laughs> guys? 500 wide? No. Uh, three, filter one. 3,000. All the way. 3, all the way. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Right there. Okay. All right. And no preamp. Uh, your preamp's off. Set your okay. AGC to fast or off. It's, yeah, okay. Either one. Fast is fine. That's fine. We'll sit there. Okay. Okay. And we don't want, um, yeah. Wait, does, does this look good, guys? We okay here? It one? does, except you're not getting out. Yeah. Change your uh, change your output meter, Larry, from ALC to uh, your power. output power. Yeah. Something happened. That, that meter just took off for a second. Yeah, we probably caught him on the end of the It's cycle. not. Yeah, just the end of the transmission. That's where it is. Because it's, yeah, it'll turn, that TX box will turn red once it transmits. But it's just got to wait now, so. Yeah. 
There it goes. Yeah, and your meter's not moving though. I'm proud of that. Yeah, I'm proud of that. So um, let me finish this transmission piece here. All right, and then um, should I should I be bringing anything turn, up? Like turn it up. Power? Let's let's go up to fifty or sixty. Okay. I personally, I'm a war criminal, running that bad boy at a hundred. I paid for all <laughs> hundred of them. I'm using all hundred of them. Ron is saying that he's seeing you on PSK Reporter, and I'm not seeing you on PSK Reporter. I have, I have not. That's on awesome. Yet. I have been spotted. Yes. Ron, are, Ron, are you looking at received by or sent by? Because I'm seeing that pe- that he's receiving signals and sending them up to PSK Reporter, but I don't see him sending any. I haven't seen him show up yet at all. Hmm. And Larry, you said you're on a DX commander, right? So, Correct. Daniel, his right side power slide is all the way up. Up, oh, yeah. Well, we need to go look at the sound card. That would be the next thing, is we need to get in the Windows sound settings. Nothing on sent by. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Okay, okay. let's go back to your Windows machine. Okay. Hit the Windows key one more time and type yes, sound. And you should see something called sound control panel. That's what we want. There are many things called sound, but that's the one we actually want. Oh, nope. That's all evil. We don't want that. We want sound. I was just talking about time. Larry says he's got his time synced to the V. Yep. Okay. So I've got sound. What? what I'm okay. Cause I'm trying to remember everything guys. I don't want to mess this up. So what, what do I do? Sound, what board sound? Do you have one that says sound control panel? That's Windows 11, I think, not Windows 10. No, I have uh, changed system here. I'll show you real quick. Makes it well, it's fine. I'm sorry. Okay. That's my choice. Um, right there. Well, that's interesting. Okay. All right. Click sound settings. We can get there from here. Okay. Mine Thanks. shows up directly. Sound settings. The, the one up top, Larry. What's that? Oh, geez. Sorry. And then on that right side, scroll your mouse down, and we're looking for sound control panel. I don't, I don't have that sound control panel um, on the right side. Yeah, on the right side, maybe. Nope. No, 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 no. Don't touch that. Okay. Input going down. There you go. Keep going. One of those should be there. It is. Click that sound control panel. Oh, that's a good call, Josh. What did Josh say? He might not be on the USB mod on inside of the radio. Oh Lord, we'll get there. Okay, let's check this. I'm one sorry, first. guys. Oh no, you're doing <laughs> yeah. great, Larry. <laughs> yeah, Josh is right. Bad today, you're lucky I'm okay. here today. Okay. All right, double click speakers. The one that says USB audio codec. Okay. Not the other one. Yep. All that right. One. Go to levels. Levels, tap the tab top. up top. Sorry. You guys know where they're at. I don't. Thank you. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. Cancel out of that. Okay. Now go cancel one more time. Okay. Oops, too many cancels. My bad. Go to sound control panel again. Okay. Over on the right side, Larry. Sorry. Thank you. Go to recording tab on top and go to microphone USB audio codec down there at the bottom. Okay. And yeah, I know, Jeff, we're getting there. Change go to icon. levels. Oh, okay, nope. sorry. Nope. Go to levels. Yep. Okay, that should be fine. Uh,. All right, cancel out of that. Go up to where it says, uh, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't used this co- this computer in so long, guys. I'm so sorry. What's the question, um, Jim? I bought it for doing this, and it's been a long time. I'm so go sorry. To, oh, go to... This is the whole plan of the show. We're doing exactly what we thought. Go to microphone array, right-click, and set as default device. 
right click yeah this doesn't do it that way sorry um set um do you not have a do you not have a mouse nope i'm using the trackpad on the on the laptop uh see if that shows up there but i don't know if it will Mm. click that click on which one i'm sorry use device enable Use this device enable, okay, and leave it. Yeah, it okay? no, we don't. We don't want that. Cancel okay. out of that. Okay. Um. Thanks for your help, push, guys. Thank you. Push, push two fingers on that, or try to press on the right, far right side of your trackpad. You should have a way to do a, a right click. On on what microphone on, array? On your trackpad, where the mouse cursor is, it is is fine. On your okay. trackpad. Use two fingers and see if that gives us a right click or or put your finger all the way over at the right side and press click. You should be able to do a right click somehow. It it will do a right click. I just don't know what it is for that computer. There you go. Bongo. Bottom, bottom right corner. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Set okay. as default device. Okay. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Now go to playback. playback up is- on the top tab. Thank you. Okay. And do the right click again on speakers, the top one. Okay. And set that as your default device. Okay. Thank you. This this is important because what this does is, unless you change that, by default, Windows may have played your sounds out of the radio. So all the dinks, boinks, boops, and whatever's, Mm-hmm. coming from windows would come out through ft8 okay interesting all right thank so, you so now that's off go ahead and okay out of that all right to can you bring up that comment josh had because josh had worked out the menu tree and it'll be much faster than me trying to find it again sure thing there we go josh thank you you're the man i don't care what ape says <laughs> all right larry we need to go and push those buttons in sequence and make sure you have that set like that. Okay. Um, on your on your radio. On the 7610. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to find out where you guys are at here. So, because I'm changing. On your StreamYard right. screen. Thank you. Okay, so menu set connectors. Menu set. I'm not keeping up. Connectors. Chat. Okay. Mod input, and thank you, thank you, Josh. I'm just gonna go to the top. Okay, so mod input. Okay, Data Josh, you're exactly mod. right. Data off and mod. Whoever labeled these yes, menu dude. settings, I hate probably them. the same guy that worked on the FT891 menu names. Okay, yeah. data off mod should be in USB, right? And it's yes. Yeah. Why is it not giving me that? Because I'm hitting data off mod, and when I press that. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. You know what happened? I held it. That's what, I held it too long. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Good man. Okay. Dave, Anything yeah, else? that's what we're doing right now. I think you got to be close. <laughs> we don't, we You're don't have decoding. much choice but to be close. You're yeah, decoding, well, so we're, right. we're at least halfway there, but this should now drive your output through the Yay. USB into the radio. Oh, that'll be great. Okay. All right. Okay, so back on to, let me get back to so I can see what, what I'm doing for you guys there. So um, split screen it. You want to do that? Sure. Now you need to go and do enable transmit again. And we're reaching the top of the hour here, folks. So the next one coming up is, <laughs> thanks, Mike. The next one coming up is uh, Communications and Cigars with John Cruck. He's going to talk about uh, DMR part two tonight. So be sure and head on over there. Well, there's a, there's the approachable noise. It's yeah, doing something. that's coming out of your speaker. Yep. So we need we need to go set the audio settings again because is you, it coming out of the laptop speaker or coming out of the radio speaker? Laptop. Yeah. We, okay. We yep. touched the audio settings. Windows thoughtfully reset other things for us. Yay, Windows. Yay, Windows. <laughs> All right. So back to your WSJTX settings. Yep. Okay, 
sorry. I just wanted to make sure it was right because they're right next to each other. So, okay. And go back uh, to like WSPTX. The, right, maybe I'm messing up here. So bear with me. So you want me to click the window? It's been a very tough day, guys. So bear with me. So what, what am I going to need to press? So let me start back up, over. Up, up. Okay. Okay. Get out of that and turn off the transmit on WSJTX. Okay. Just click so the, the red button. Transmit there. button. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That that or the transmit, either one will toggle them off. Now go down to the bottom right corner of your computer okay. on the menu down there at the bottom mm -hmm. and left click the speaker icon and change it off of USB codec because that's what okay, it's Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and you should be able to click that and change that to. Um, it's on USB audio codec. Yeah, change it to real tech speakers. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right, and then let's go. Now let's go into WSJTX settings. All right. Sorry, I've held you guys up so long. Didn't mean that to happen. Okay. This is what settings. we're here for. Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. our this is our jam, Larry. All right, let me get you back to a full screen. If it, it, Larry, if it wasn't you, we would be trying to make Chuck like uh, like ICOM radios more. That's, there you go. That's, that's our we next We got him goal. to buy one, so or, we're happy. He does own like one. He does own me, one. But. Yeah, me like Yezu radios. Go ahead. Um, Chipper Jones, Larry. Chipper Jones. Doesn't matter. I know. I, I, it's okay. All the same. I'm, cool with it. Yeah, I'm okay. Go to, go to file settings. Yeah. This is Toads. Joe, Brett, I'm going to need a voiceover of that. This oh, that would be cool. Toads. Go to audio. Okay. All right. Oops, sorry. Okay. I'll put okay, speakers. Those are still those are still correct. Okay. Tell it okay. Let's get out of there. All right. Let's X out of WSJTX and fire it back up from scratch. Okay. This is the no, longest restart. This is the longest training session in the history of man. Oh no, and we've I'm, done two and I'm a half hours you. before. <laughs> yeah, we did. We've your these are rookie numbers, Larry. These are rookie numbers. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for this letting me at least toes. feel like my tail isn't totally between my legs here. Oh, you're doing great. I want the doink doink sound like Law and Order. <laughs> doink doink. Dun, dun. This this dun, dun. Ape had that on his soundboard. Then he went and got his yeah. voice fixed and took his soundboard out. I think he was working on, on maybe bringing the soundboard back, I guess. I hope. Okay. Did you guys want me to have it back on the screen here on the, the reload WGST? Is that what you All want right. me to do? Go click. Okay. He set on CQ. So go ahead and turn on enable TX. Okay. And let's see if we got you cooking. Thank you. And flip back over to your radio, Larry, and let's set it to ALC and make sure we're still getting some Todd, good ALC. Todd, that's just mean. Next week on Ham Nuggets, we're going to have JT Alert and N1MM and Grid Tracker. <laughs> no. No. All right, we might do SDR control for the Mac people. That's it. Oh, Steve. Let's do it. He's got a Mac. He's got a Mac. Well, yeah, but we got to make the brother spend a couple dollars. I don't know. I mean, if he's as cheap as some people I know whose name rhymes with Schmeev, um, he ain't going <laughs> to want to spend I, the money. I'm, I'm in the front of that line, Steve. I'll tell you. <laughs> right there with your brother. Larry, you and me are fighting for first place on that one. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. And then if it doesn't work, Josh says, go back to connectors and set data mod to USB. It's probably yes, not turned on either. I, Fellers, I tried to get him to do the tune button, but uh, Jim overruled me. Well, I want him putting out power. Tune puts out like one watt or something. There's, I mean, it... there's, there's two different tune buttons. The tune on WSJTX just does tune. The tune on the front of the radio lowers the power, sends out a carrier, blah, blah, blah. Two different tune buttons. Yes, and the one on WSJTX sends out like a zero power. It lowers the threshold. It does not send out a full power. I'm going to have to tune. measure that. I'm going to measure that. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I can do that right now. Oh, wait. I, I got a contact. All right. So I'm going to hit enable TX. Yeah. See, I'm not seeing 15. Larry. I'm not seeing Larry at all. 
Okay, should I just take the enable TX off? You can, yeah. You're not actually transmitting right now. And then Josh says, it. go in and do data mod. There we go. All right, so I am putting 5.5 watts out on enable TX. Let's turn that off. Let's so the data button. one mod, should that be just done to hey. USB then? 5.5 watts. Yeah, data one. Not okay. data. Go back. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. I was just checking this because it was, uh, I had uh, USB on data one, but data two is on, uh, at the time it was on Mike ACC. So, but we're not using the two, are we? We're using one. Yeah, we're using one. You're right. using USB D1, so it's going to be data one. Great. Thank you. All right. Data off mode should be on USB, right? And how do these settings look? They look okay? Let me get you a better view of that. No, that looks um, great. That looks good. even better. Okay. All right. All right. Split it. Mike, you are correct. Well, Tim is not looking. <laughs> okay. Should I tune this? Would that help it, or what do you think? It when in doubt, tune it out. You're not getting signals from WSJTX into your radio. Your radio is doing the cat control, but it's not sending any signals out. Okay. And Josh is saying, I think you just did this. Menu connectors, mod input, data one, mod USB. Yeah. Did you do the input sure settings? Did. Setting, uh, connector. Mod input. Yeah, and then it's USB. Data one mod, yeah, it's USB. Okay. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And then is he using the USB one connector on the back? Is there multiple USB connectors? Is that what I'm seeing? Well, if he was using the wrong one, this wouldn't work this far. To there are control. multiple USB connectors on the back of the radio, and one of them is not for this. I can't remember. Josh may remember. I don't remember what the other one's for. I'm not using it. I get I ought to get Josh on this. He might actually know what he's doing. Crazy. Apparently, <laughs> I'm going to drop the link to Streamyard in the chat, and like 27 yeah. people are going to. Yeah, guys, I yeah, this is this is kind of embarrassing when you sit on this side of it, you know, and it ain't working, and you feel no, bad. Larry, oh, Larry, stuff. Larry, Larry, Larry. I got a Larry, brother downstairs Larry. who's pretty sick. So I'm, I'm, I, I got to kind of go soon. I don't mean to be rude, but no worries. Oh, uh, no, yeah. no worries. No, don't worry about it. And Larry, the whole point of this is to honestly me. us trying to help, teach. I want to help other people. That's why, you know, cause it's hard to right. say you don't know something, right. To say, I'm willing to let myself be taught online and live in front of everybody that I don't know how to do it. And that's, oh, Chuck, know, that's and Chuck is throwing us under the bus. You guys should get Josh on. I mean, I suggested that, Chuck, but that kind of sounds harsh, man. No, I, I, Josh, I, I'm cool with whoever can help. I'm totally, I'm totally on board with that. I just want to not make any more mistakes because I want people to learn from this. I don't want them to keep seeing Larry make a ton of mistakes. So that's, that's not good. And thank you, Don. I appreciate that. Larry, how much more time do you have? Yeah. Um, I could probably go to 15 after, guys. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, Josh, I'm actually doing LAN. I'm using SDR control, which I discovered last week, and it's magical. If you got a Mac or an iPad, it's awesome to control the 7610. My Windows machine is off. Well, I haven't had it on in several days now. Because, okay, hold on. I could be wrong, but, well, probably am wrong. But here's, I mean, I, I obviously was making something work because... I've I've got this call right here, didn't I? Didn't I um, make or is that that wrong? was from that's auto it's auto generated from when you double clicked somebody who was calling mm -hmm. CQ mm -hmm. way back when yeah. yeah way back when and it's just going to stay there if you double clicked one of those red ones right now it would update all that information instead okay of I didn't know if that meant that I made the call yeah. or not no yeah, mm -hmm. I was wondering if it meant I made the call okay no I I don't think you're putting out any signal at the USB. Okay weird so something's something's off somewhere okay i got the right 
plugs. So I know I've got the right plug in the back. It's a printer cable plug. So it's a printer USB into the back of the radio, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So I've got that type, correct. Type B. Yeah. Should I try a different, uh, the other COM port on the radio? I mean, I'm sorry, on the laptop? No. Uh-uh. Okay. okay. That's that's not going to be the problem. Because it the seems problem to be is... able to pick up the data, but just not. It's like it broke, ain't working. So Mike is saying that we're one restart of WSJTX away from getting this we already, working. We've got everything configured okay. in the rig now. Well, let's give it a shot. Do it, do it again. We already did that, that. but And Josh is on his way. Josh is on his way? Josh is on his way. Dun, 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 dun. Isn't there a song about that? Dun, dun. Hang on. <laughs> That's it. On his way. Oh, who did that, Larry? You're old, apparently, because I know that song, too. And I'm old. Little River Band. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hey, Josh. Not one of my favorite bands. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me okay? Hey, yes, Josh. Long player. time no CB. Hey, yeah, Larry. I think you're really <laughs> close, Larry, by the way. So don't don't fret. We'll, we'll get this straightened out. Uh, the first thing, so really quick, on your, um, on your 7610, Mm -hmm. Click menu and then meter. Let's see the meter screen. That's going to make things a lot easier. I normally run it there when I'm doing digital, and it makes the ALC tuning um, pretty run. nice. Okay. So uh, now uh, let's let me, me let a, me sorry Josh. Yeah. Let me help you out here. Give you a little mm -hmm. better view of the radio. Hopefully, perfect. Okay. That was the next thing I was going to ask. Perfect. Okay. That. Now yeah. hit while we're looking at this screen, which is great. Hit the tune button um on the on the wsjtx okay i forget about this screen i always use the analog i'm gonna, I'm gonna so people can follow along i'll click over to laptop and show this is where uh -huh. i'm tuning if you don't know yeah, that's yep. where it's all under like so then we'll go back to the radio screen and uh, thank you again josh not a problem and for, for all, both of you guys too not i'm not saying that just yeah oh sure larry Sure. Josh, today has yeah. been. You're, you're, close. Has you're doing just, great. It, it geez, takes... I almost sent to that 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 terrible message you don't want to send an hour before and say, "Guess what, dude? Can't <laughs> I'm make sorry, it. it's not going to happen today." Yeah. Did you uh, flip we... your screen? Let me see really fast. Yeah. The, the still the says tune on it, which is weird. Does this should see your radio screen? screen? Yeah, Larry, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Flip over to the radio. Okay. Yeah, you're. Ah, uh, there it is. Hey, you're you got doing it. something. No, that's it. You got it. So. Uh, okay. Now you can you can enable CQ. You're doing it. He's, you got it. He's I, got he way got too much ALC though, Josh. Well, okay. Hit well, tune again. Now that we're looking at the screen, sorry, I wasn't. Okay, hold on. Let me go back yeah, he's, here. he's pegged out. He's okay. pegged out. Okay. So now just the uh, back on the WSJTX screen while yep. you have the tune button still on. Just just okay. drag that little power slider that's going vertical on the right hand side. Just drag it down to a halfway. Put it halfway and hit tune again. Sorry. Yeah. Oops, yep. Sorry. Well, that, that little baby moves fast. Yeah, yeah, that would, that would fix all your problems right there. You put it down to zero. And then, it. So <laughs> yeah. Moved, and then click tune. Fast. Click tune. And then let's see the 7610 screen again. Yep. Okay. You uh, see how it there. moved down? So mine is it said about 25% on my 7610. Yeah. So, just so his, uh, uh, the other I, thing, Josh, is he, right? his, I went right his, here. He's, he's modulating voice, it looks like, still too. Yeah. Uh, uh, Test, drag, test, 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 test. No, maybe not. Drag the tune, drag that power bar to 25%, the lower 25. Okay. His volume level is up all the that. way. Look if we that. turn that right, down, that would probably help as well. Just a little bit higher. You want one blue bar where it says ALC. Yeah, one little blue bar on that ALC. i just looking here for it, guys. I'm sorry. No, you're there you go. go. Uh, so one little there bar. You go. One oh, little bar right oh. there. Sorry, I'm trying more. to catch it. Trying to catch it. Oh, okay, that and you don't have to get too precise. perfect. Done. Okay. Perfect. Got it. Now the thing that we got to pay attention to is your SWR is showing a little high, <laughs> so we might want to take care of that too. Do you use a tuner by chance on this? And then I, yeah, yeah, my twenty meter element needs to be needs to be rebuilt. So let me. Can I tune it like normal? Yeah. Or? Uh, uh, yeah. Tune it. Tune it on the radio. Yeah. Just hold it down. Okay. Excellent. Hold on. It's not going to do it. Because sure. it's in a part of 20 meters it's not cut for. So hold on. Can I just go to I can go to teletype and just do it that way, right? Uh no, just I send the just carrier out, the get it to the extra. No, yeah. no, it's it's no the antenna outside. We've had some a lot of ice and snow this winter, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to um hang on. I need an external go. tune for that and then come back with with just a fine tune. It should be fine. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. 
All right. I think no, you're but... good to go. Are we good, I you think? think? You could, I think you can do a uh, click CQ and. Well, let's find out, shall we? And you're on CQ. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Enable so TX. we just want to go to here and then enable TX again. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Show up. Okay, so let me show both little screens. So while you're doing that, you see that green bar at the bottom of your WSJTX screen that's moving? Yeah. That's that's your 15-second yep. timer. So it'll uh, move a full 15 a seconds. Oh, no. Sorry, and the then kicked in. It's good. Yeah. And it'll be yeah. your turn after that first 15 seconds. Every other 15 okay. seconds is when you talk right. or when you listen. Right. I knew that part. I just got a little nervous when all of a sudden the tuner started firing off again. It's fine. It's as long as it's set to auto tune. It's okay. It'll, it'll take care of it. Cool. Should I, just, I mean, unless you have a big antenna problem. So, Brian, it moved back when he was done. It's all good. You can see it says USB D one right above fourteen oh seven three. He's good. There we go. Are you guys uh, somebody responding to you already? Holy moly! I know. How about that? That's that's uh, that's, oh, that's look at that. nice. Tennessee. Thank you, Jeff. That's nice. So, see, this is Larry's signal there reports go. going out. Look at all of I that. I can't hear you. Bummer. I was trying to get in here and see if I could oh, say Oh, gosh. Talk. I'm sorry. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen him that. show up yet either here. By the way, for those who are keeping score, I was kidding about Yesu. Insert any name and you'd have me say that. I was just trying to be funny. So, don't be offended. Okay. So, I've got confirm and just hit OK on that, right? Just hit OK to confirm. Oh, you made your first contact. Let me get you back up on the this. screen real just, quick. Let me just kind of put this over here, and then I'll, I'll show it on the big the big old laptop screen. Oh, it's Jeff and 4 Jeff, POD. Yeah, Way and to go, Eastern Jeff. Eastern Tennessee. Jeff, we did it, mate. Yay. I, I, want, I want you to know Jeff was talking smack earlier, too, about, yeah. about Max. So, mm. Smack Mac. You just smack Mac. It's not really that different, um, to be honest, with the FT8 setup. On no, uh -uh. it's it's the USB thing. But anybody who's done the Linux is generally okay uh, with it. Oh, oh, uh, actually, I take that back. With, with Windows, you know how you pull up Device Manager and you look for the ports. With with right. Macs, you bring up Terminal and you do an LS on the dev port and you look for that USB connection and you yes. can just oh plug goodness. it in, unplug okay. it, and, and you and you just it. and you just frightened eighty five percent of the people watching this stream. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. no, that's the that. easiest way. Right. You know, fast. I know, I know, I'm with you on that. But have you, Jay, have you I tried Cliff SDR control? Virginia. Cliff, thank I have. You. That's nice. I've got both uh, the, for it's, the Mac OS and the iOS. It's fantastic. I love it. Great. I bought it over the weekend. Uh, no, I've been I, I got to say, of it. You gentlemen had him covered. I, I think I was just here for moral support. I think the, all the connections were already done by the time I joined. Uh, I think we had that last that last little mod one setting. Once you did that, I think it was he was good. So great job, gentlemen. Was, Thank uh, you. Thank, Thank you, Josh. Josh. Thanks for showing us, Josh, Josh. brother. Thank you, yeah, buddy. No just in time, help. too. Under the gun. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's we see if I can hear done. you and make a contact. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, we got Kevin in here. We got Red Summit RF in here. We got yeah, the other Mike group. in here. We got the gaming ham. Chuck's in here. Anime's in here. Man, we got everybody in here. That's right. And I made a contact. KG5OWB. I don't see you on my funny. screen either, Larry. Oh, because he's on a beam. He's pointed far east, I bet. You pointed due east, Larry, from Oregon? No, no. I The, the, the beam's in the garage still. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> I was gonna say. He, I, I thought you said you're on a DX big, commander. I want to sit at the big boy table too. Josh, he's he's on the DX commander. I oh, can't good. do it like you did it, man. It's, I can't do. I don't have my audio. Yeah, you know, it's, it's epic. I hear that in my head every time someone says DX commander. So, <laughs> well, mates, it's been I'm a looking bit for fun. you. Yeah. yeah, I still don't. I still don't see him. But it's been a bit of fun. Yeah, but let me, you made let a contact try. with Jeff. Yeah, I got Jeff, and also uh, I think I also got Mike. I think we're doing that, working that out now. I click, and you guys taught me how to do the left. The left. Uh, let me get on a better screen. Sorry, <laughs> y'all taught me the left screen is right. a good place to go if you're going to be looking. Wow, worse even yet. Uh, you told me over here that the uh, left window screen, this part right over here where I'm pointing is a part where you can hear people trying to call you or whatever. And so I've yep. been clicking on those and it seems to be doing stuff. So is that right? Yep. So yeah. if somebody's trying to reach me, they're going to be in this window here, right? In this one? Yeah, yes. every, everybody's going to be in there. That's every conversation that you can hear fully decoded, whether you're a part of it or not. That's the party line, wanna, the old phone what party if line. I want to control the whole thing. What if I want to just be everywhere? 
amplifier. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, better not, better not once you, more power. Once you click that enable TX button, you can yeah. see the generated standard messages and it's got the little radio yeah, button. The yeah, the steps. Yeah, I've noticed one, that. Two, yeah. Three, four. So Each it's step. just going to go through the whole playlist there and do it for you. You don't have to do anything at that point. So once you start <laughs> calling CQ and someone comes back to you, WSJTX is just going to work through all the messages until you get to the bottom and then prompts you to log. So Isn't that something? That's yeah. pretty special, guys. Thank you. Josh, thank you too, buddy. You're a good it's friend. The, thank you, man. It's the power that WSJTX gives you and also its greatest uh, comment that people make. That's just automated QSOs. It just does it for you. <laughs> yep. Well, I've come, got come. gout too, and my mm. gout is kicking up really bad, and that's not come. real radio. Get Come join the FDA off on Thursday nights. You'll be at the top of the scoreboard because it's all automated and it requires no skill whatsoever no to skill. win. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks, guys. You guys taught me something fun today. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry I was just under the gun today with all this stuff, but thank you for understanding yeah. too. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I got to take care of my brother. So I'm Definitely. sorry, fellas. God bless you guys. Thanks for letting me be part of this, okay? And thanks yeah, for helping care, me learn to do it. You're the best. Thank yeah, you, Larry. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Bye, guys. Good job. Larry. Good job. Bye. Bye. Thank you. I'll also take the opportunity to bow out. I see that N8YO is working uh, Dawn and 5SKT right now on WSJTS. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Good job, gentlemen. You did a you did a fantastic job. So I'll. Uh, Thanks for sweeping in, Josh. Appreciate yeah, it. For jumping no in. problem. Appreciate it. Take it easy, guys. See How you, do bud. I get out of here? Oh, that's right. We're using StreamYard. Okay. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> I kicked him out. <laughs> okay. Well, that helped. I, I helped. I did something. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> So uh, that's the end of this episode. We only took 20 minutes of overtime tonight. And I did send you over to Communications and Cigars for uh, DMR chat with John. He is still going now if you guys want to head over there. Thank you all for being awesome. Jim, thanks for being here. Much appreciate all the help. Appreciate it, y'all. See you.